Guys, what is up? It is October-ish. Ish. And so we are going to tell you, in preparation for October Fest. That's right, which how, happens in September. Right, because that's that's the Customary. logic of the beer yes. world. We're going to tell you how to survive a beer festival. Glub, 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 glub. Guys, so yes, it is Oktoberfest time, and you're probably going to go to a beer festival this fall, this summer, this winter, whenever you go get your Whenever go you're watching one. this video, there's yeah. a beer fest just around the corner. There is, and you can see our videos on our previous beer fests, which are awesome. But if you've never gone, it might be kind of a daunting task. It might be something you don't know how to prepare for or what you're exactly going to do while you're there. So that's what we're here to talk about today. Got lots of experience with beer festivals, <laughs> both good, bad, and <laughs> ugly. So guys, these are our tips for beer festivals. All right, tip number one, and I try and pair the beer with whatever video topic we're doing, uh, and this beer is Hill Farmstead's Everett. Now, I had to drink it because someone just handed it to me out of nowhere and I loved it. But secondly, I want you to, to make sure that when you're at a beer festival, you only try beers you probably won't ever try again. Yeah, I mean, the point of going to a beer festival is that you're being exposed to just sometimes literally thousands of beers. Yes. And, and why play it safe? You know, you, you only get, in most cases, like 15 tokens or tickets, Whatever. if yeah. that, you know, give or take. But why why try why try beer you you know you've had a, unless you just are there to sort of casually drink? I mean, you could do that anytime you want. Yeah, I always feel dumb when we're at the, the Bell's winter fest even though it's not really well the bells winter fest but the uh the big summer beer fest in michigan i yeah. call it bells and they have oberon on tap or something like that and i'm like who's doing this who's going to a beer festival and drinking oberon don't do it that's where you're going to try some of the things that they only brew for festivals and that's where you're going to try some things that yes people might have a line for but they're worth it yeah in the end stand in line and so enjoy. like you know to, to your point with the oberon you know, don't get Oberon, but we went to a beer festival in Kalamazoo. Yeah. And what they did was they had like 15 different versions of Oberon. Right. That were just like festival one-offs. Now that, I feel like, sure. is a worthwhile adventure. Sure. But yeah, I mean, if you've, if you've had a beer, you know, Oberon, don't go and get Oberon. Right. You can get Oberon whenever you want. So Most of us. Be open to, right, or whatever beer it is, yeah. but, but be open to new... Uh, experiences. Try new beers. Try beers of the same style you like. Yes. But just try new ones. Yes. I would say my second tip is be prepared with water. Uh, especially when you go to a summer beer festival. It's hot. It's outdoors. You're gonna you're gonna be drinking, and so you're gonna be sweating more. You're gonna be walking around. This one is a totally underrated tip. I know everyone feels like they're not going to need it or that's not going to be me. I can, you know, I can portion, I can relax, you know, I'm not going to overdo it. They give you three ounce pours, which doesn't sound like that much, but even, even if they actually gave you three ounce pours <laughs> right. and not, you know, to the brim, which they do, you know, you're having 15 of those of probably various styles. Like that's a lot of alcohol. It's, it's, you know, dehydrating. You really, really need to drink some water just to replenish your body because if you don't, you will rue the day. <laughs> so, Ron, this next one, I, I, I feel like people are gonna are gonna poo poo this one and say, "Oh, those are strictly amateur things to do." But I think pretzel necklaces are a great idea. Now, a lot of people say never do that. You look like such a noob. You look like such a tool, and you do. You do. You do look like a tool. Unavoidable. But when you're standing in line for a beer and you want something to clear out the last bourbon age stout that you just had and you're going to go to try something different, what are you going to do? Right, you I mean, got to have something to clear the palate. And just it goes along the same lines as the water. Like yeah. you got to put something else in your system other than 15 samples of beer. Even if it's just something to nibble on, just to put something into your That's stomach. True. I, Most places will sell food while they're there. Yeah, sure. But sure. You, can, you, can, you can purchase, and typically, you know, just like any other event, it's going to be overpriced for yeah. the most part. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, it's hit or miss on quality. Not like you're getting gourmet, but I have seen people really get creative with their necklaces. That's true. So, I mean, we've seen the whole... Funyuns? Yeah, Funyun, and we've seen guys throw, snap into Slim Jims, and yeah. we've seen all kinds of good stuff. So, yes, you look like a tool, but 
there are thousands of tools at these festivals, <laughs> and, and you sort of blend in. I mean, you're <laughs> just another wrench in the toolbox. That's absolutely correct. So it, I highly recommend the snack necklace. And even if you don't do it in a necklace form, bring something, like I said, if nothing Crackers. else, if nothing else to cleanse your palate, because you're going to be trying all right. these When you beers. try your third triple bourbon barrel, quadruple peanut butter, <laughs> aged in a cave in nitro on Mars, double <laughs> Quadruple IPA. That's eight times. That's octuple. Octuple IPA. Yes. You need a you need a pretzel. You need a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> I would say another tip is ask people what they like so far. A lot of times you only get fifteen or to whatever to how many tokens unless you hoard them. That's another tip. Uh, <laughs> you only get so many tokens to try so many beers, and so if you don't ask around and, and be friendly with people and say, "Hey, what do you, what did you have so far that you love?" Like, like, what's good? No. Like what's good here? Yeah, no, like seriously, what's good? Like what's good? Uh, they'll you're never gonna get the right beers. Yeah, no, I mean, I think one thing that you know, there's lots of ways. I, I kind of view beer festivals like like Vegas. There's a lot of ways to do Vegas, right? Oh yeah. You you could go hard in Vegas. You can relax in Vegas. You can do all kinds of stuff. Beer festivals are the same way. There's a lot of ways to approach it. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like the most fun we've had at festivals is when we've talked to people in line or we're, you know, kind of hanging out at one of, because usually there's like a featured brewer, Yeah. you know, whether it's, you know, a big one like shorts or something. And, you know, you say like, hey, well, you know, what, what have you guys had today that you really liked? I know, for example, speaking of porters, we probably would not have stopped at B.O.B.'s Bob, to yeah. try their uh, peanut butter porter had we not asked somebody and they were like, it's the best one here. Like 15 people said it. It wasn't just like one or two. We, we never would have had it if we just didn't ask. So talk to people. It's a social event. Everyone there is there to have a good time and have some beer. So so talk to each other. Yeah. Uh, my tip, I think we're on five. Tip sure. five. My tip is to somehow, some way, know your limit. Yes. I, I, I know... <laughs> I have really, really been bad at following my own advice. Yes. Uh, what ends up happening, and this will speak to your tip, I believe, coming up. What ends up happening is you end up with more tokens than you bargained for. And uh, and it's really easy to just, you know, throw one in, grab one. And, you know, these people are awesome. They want you to try their beer. They want you to have a great time. They want to provide you great customer service. And so a lot of them are very generous with their pours. And it's always like, especially towards the tail end of the festival, it's like a free-for-all buffet line. Yeah. Okay. And and I have been bit by my own beer ego. Yes. Thinking, I can, I mean, and, and a lot of these... They're three-ounce pours. You don't even start feeling it yeah. until much later. And, and you just... It's really hard to do, I think, at a festival because it's such small quantities. It doesn't really feel like you're drinking a lot. But you got to set – it's like back to Vegas. Like have, have a bankroll have a, have, have a bank yeah. and know when you are going to be done and walk away. Yeah. We're going to try this Everett Porter. Consider one of the best porters in the world in a little minute review. <laughs> Okay, Corey, now you've been to Phil, uh, Phil Harmstead. I have not <laughs> been to Phil Harmstead, actually. <laughs> you have not been to Hill Harmstead? I, not, I thought no. you went. I went to Vermont. I never got there. It was okay. closed the day I was going to go, right. and I didn't have an extra day. And so, oh. right. Well, we have it here, and I, I, this, I think, is my first one. For, yeah, probably. Yeah, I ever. think this is my first Hill Harmstead, and it's yeah. sort of been one of those breweries that has like a cult following, and now it's really blown up. And, yeah. Um, they're known for their sours and such. They're known, well, they're known for all their beers. Their IPAs are great. Their uh, farmhouse ales are great. I mean, it's literally just this this dude who is brewing some of the most two style perfect beers. They're not heavy and 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 dark. They're just light, pillowy, airy, beautiful, perfect every single time. And so this beer is considered one of the best porters on on earth, if not in the U.S. Uh, so <laughs> so I I want to try this out. I've been sipping it, and my first reaction is just you know perfectly solid it's got a nice coffee uh background to it it's got a good upfront roastiness but again it's light really is and i mean it's it's so balanced i mean there's oh. there's really nothing crazy that's the name of his I, name i don't want a stout right now i want a porter right i mean we're drinking a porter you don't want it to be too heavy like a stout it's nice light pillowy yeah um but the flavors are really really nice i mean they're, they're just 
very balanced. There's no bitter aftertaste except a, a nice one from like the hop edition. Yeah. Um, you know, the aroma is, is nice and clean. Mm -hmm. It's very, very pleasant. Yes. Very nice. And I think that's, it's weird because when you think of like the most highly rated beers out there, you never describe words like solid, pleasant, nice. Because those are usually like, oh, you know, shelfy beers are yeah. pleasant. And I'm, I'm, I don't know, I don't even know but, how to rank this because it's like, how do you rate a, a great brown ale? You right, know what exactly, I mean? like, exactly. Like but, perfectly, perfectly good. Yeah, it's exactly. But he gets so much credit for being just so on point with his balance. And I think there's some really good layers going on here. There's some chocolate, there's some licorice, there's some brown sugar. I mean... You get a lot of complexity without being overbearing, which I think is is unique and great. Yeah, I would say it's one of the better porters I've had, just yeah. from a just from a pure drinking standpoint. Yeah. So with that being said, I slept them all over myself. If you want to know what we gave this Everett from Hill Farmstead, stay tuned after this. Okay, Corey. Any more tips for the viewers for oh. for beer fest? Oh, we got tips for days. Yeah, r rattle them off. Another tip I would say is. Go to a brewery you've never heard of, specifically a very small one. We went to one cotton brewing that became our favorite one that we never heard of. Uh, and there are ones that you won't even remember their names. Yes. Um, but if you if you are a, if you are a user of Untapped, I feel like they were created for beer festivals. Yes. And I know we went to some small itty bitty one that was doing all Star Wars themed yeah, beers. Yeah, that's what and, I was just gonna say. And they were super delicious. And I was right. like, this kills anything that a brewery that will not be named brought. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, 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 inside, if you watch this, you might know, you is. might know. Uh, but I just, I just feel like you're right. There's, there's opportunity to dis, to, to be an explorer of beer and really yeah. discover the next amazing craft brewery. Yes. Uh, and I think the last tip and the best tip is if you're not going to the one in the summer where you have your own breathalyzer at the end, which you always should do because it's fun to try and guess. Always have a DD. I mean, Ron gets his wife pregnant every time we, we want to go to a beer festival, and so she's just naturally there. Yes, it's uh, nice and <laughs> it's, but yeah, but you need to get home somehow, and it's just it's just responsible. Yeah, I'll give you my last final tip: start a craft beer blog and get media passes to yes. the beer festival because that is really where that's where you, it comes you, in you, you get your bang for your buck if you do that. So <laughs> I would definitely start the review brew crew. And, or, or review the brew. You know who you are. <laughs> and uh, start your own blog and ask for a media pass because they're selling and you're buying and it's great. So it's great. Uh, those are our tips for the perfect craft beer festival experience. We would love to hear if you have some tips to add to the list. Keep the convert, throw yeah. the wealth, share the wealth, you know, exactly. redistribute the wealth really. Yeah. And let us know in the comment section below. And for everyone else, what are some must think about when you're going to plan for a craft beer fest. I so think the last one I would say is just go. No, oh, yeah, for sure. Just go. You yeah, just, just got to get in the car and go. It's yeah. so much fun. Lots of fun. So, Ron, have you mulled it over enough? Do you need a little bit more time? No. Can you come to a great consensus yeah. on, as you call Phil Harmstead's Everett? I think I would give Everett, I mean, it's, it's deliciously good. I mean, it's really, really good. And I think that deserves for a porter. If I was going to judge this at like a, a festival or something, yeah. I mean, I'd probably give it like a, a real solid like ninety five, ninety six. I okay. mean, it's yeah. it's not blowing my mind, so I'm not going to like throw it in like a hundred category. But I I think it's like expertly done. Yeah. So it's going to get an A plus from me. It's just not one that I I think that I might remember down the road. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. Um. I think what I would give this only because I, I don't like the the amount of bitterness that lingers. Again, with the last part, we had the same issue. This one's a little bit more of like a dark grain bitter. I think it's just a little too much for my liking in a porter. Um, I'm going to go like a 98. I think. Wow. Yeah. I mean. Lots of points taken off. No. Well, I mean, it's just, it's so complex and so light and that's what he's known for. That's what they're great at. And I think it's just a perfect example of what a reporter can be and doesn't have to be over over the top crazy. So, All right, guys. So let us know what you think about beer festivals. Give us your best tips. Try some ever if you get a chance to. And always, always remember. We're the Brew Review Crew. And we will review. A brew for you. Cheers. Cheers. Guys, you may have noticed there is some sick 
ass jewelry on this desk right here. Yes. This is a watch from Original Grain. They make phenomenally beautiful watches, really sturdy, high quality watches, and mm -hmm. it's really like handcrafted in a nice package. We're giving it away. We're giving it away this amazing Brewmaster watch in the Barrel series. Yes, it's actually a reclaimed barrel wood, which is really cool. Uh, handcrafted. Handcrafted, $220 value from this desk to your desk. All you gotta do is click on the link below to see how you can enter. See ya.